Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. Congressman Mark Amaday of CD2 here for the whole program on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Located in the heart of Carson City, the Bank Saloon, a historic watering hole with a modern feel. With a variety of classic cocktails featuring Nevada spirits, space for private events, conferences, and an incredible atmosphere. The Bank Saloon offers a great location to work and play. Come visit us. Located at the corner of 5th and Carson, we'll save you a drink. is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we are always delighted to welcome back to the program Congressman Mark Amity of CD2. Pleasure to have you here, sir. Thanks, Sam. As we are taping this on Wednesday morning, April 28th, uh, the president is going to give a speech tonight to the nation, and the New York Times releases a piece that says, an additional $1.8 trillion is gonna to go towards workers, students, and families. Your thoughts about all this money that is being poured into the states? Well, you, you know, it's not a new saying that you never wanna waste a good crisis. You can get things done that you can't normally. Um, and, and quite frankly, I don't think anybody's opposed to recovery and doing smart things for recovery for their communities, their states, the nation, their industries, all that stuff. But we're at six trillion and counting that, that we didn't have in the bank. And so I see this stuff and you watch the history on where exactly the six trillion's gone and some of it's gone to very good places, but other of it has gone to places which fit narratives and which fit talking points and which quite frankly fit agendas. And I, I, I'm just sitting there watching the interest rate, which is still pretty friendly, but as the debt continues to grow, and, and Sam, it, I, I gotta be honest with you, I think the culture in D.C. right now, with everybody there, in, in at least the executive and, and the legislative branches, I'm just hoping that the chickens don't come home to roost while I'm in office. And, and they're playing chicken with that, and, and it's like at some point in time, and I'm not an, a, an economics major or anything like that, but it's like these are, these are huge numbers. Um, and, and then quite frankly, say, well, we're gonna pay for it with tax increases. I believe they will vote for tax increases, but Sam, history's pretty clear. You don't use that money to pay down the debt. You, use, you spend that money too. The debt continues to metastasize. And so, um, when you look at, I haven't seen the bill, which is, I always try to withhold, so tell me what the actual bill says instead of the talking points. But when you look at that, you say, well, you know how much is for roads and bridges and schools and, and fiber optic and, and all those sorts of things that go into it, um, um, infrastructure for, for vibrant communities, um, th th there's not much of it that's going into that. Although you could probably spend two trillion on it and you know, it would strengthen their cause. You're going, well, I know it's another two trillion, but this is all absolute, you know, 95% going towards those sort of things. Those issues will still be there and in need when this gets done. You can't spend money that fast. Well, and that's an interesting point because I remember um, at the very beginning of the Gibbons administration in Nevada, 
Um, NDOT came out with a number that said that we were six billion dollars short of repairs to infrastructure in the state, uh, roadways, etc. And I talked to one of uh, uh, Governor Gibbons consultants at the time and I said, you know, what would happen if we got six billion dollars to give to NDOT? And the person said, we couldn't do it because every road in the state would be with red cones and no one would be able to get anywhere. Um, the other part is, do we have the people to be able to do the work for all this money that's flowing in until at some point, A, we get uh, this unemployment payments to a more sane level, and B, look at immigration to where, not comprehensive immigration, but immigration where we can bring in the workers we need to get the work done? Well, I, I mean, those people that are familiar with what the general engineering contracting community looks like in Nevada and, and in adjacent states, because there are California companies that come over and work, there are Utah, but it's like if, if you hit everybody, there is not enough equipment, personnel, uh, engineers, you name it, draftsmen, the whole nine yards, where you're like, hey, um, that's fine if you want to sequester the money for that, but quite frankly, you're looking at, I have no idea, somewhere between a five and 10 year plan, which is fine, you gotta start, but to, to somehow say, I, I just, it's, it's bewildering to me how narratives have now become facts, and talking points have become the narrative, and, and you're going, hey, listen, this doesn't have to be about my side and your side, let's just talk reality in terms of what's needed to, to, to build I-11 through Clark County or what's needed to solve the Interstate 80 problem east of Reno and Sparks. What do you gotta do for that? You know, what do you gotta do for, for educational infrastructure? Any of that stuff. But you know, there's very little of that talk, you know, in terms of X's and O's and plus and minuses with, with design and construction and planning professionals. It's all the political people doing their narratives, which quite frankly is not a real solid foundation to stand on. So government is not efficient. Government doesn't have the ability in a short term to look at a problem and solve it um, in, 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 in an efficient way. And the example I would give is that obviously there were millions and millions of people in this country that desperately needed help from the government during COVID. Yeah. Um, but the government does have the ability to say, these are the people we should help. These are the people that don't need the help. So therefore, they spent money to everybody. It's an incredibly inefficient system. How do we get the unemployment payments reduced to the people who should be going back to work versus helping people who still need help? Well, I mean, you experienced it with what I call the helicopter checks, which were not targeted at all. If you met essentially one criteria, you made less than, and I forget what the number is. I think it was 75,000. You got a check. And, and you're sitting there going, well, well, if they needed it during the pandemic, then great. But you know, and I know lots of people who were employed, stayed employed, their financial situation didn't change at all in terms of income. And, and it's like, well, well, they got them too. And so when you talk about the, the unemployment situation, first of all, no disrespect, Chuck Schumer, but, but this, this federal add-on has got to stop. I, I mean, it's like, hey, it's time to get back to, and it's never going to be what it was in February of last year, but whatever the new normal is, I mean, there's discussion on, well, maybe this is kind of the camel under the nose's tent in terms of universal income from the federal government. And it's like, well, I'd have to see what the proposal is. Off the top of my head, it's like, eh. Um, money because you're alive, let's, let's, we want to be careful with that. But having said that, Sam, you sit there and, and, and you go, if you have no targeting, and that's what you've just described, it's like, nope, if you're this status, it's like, what are you making? What's the story? Are there kids in your household? Are there not? You know, how old are you? What are your med... I, I mean, if you want to do something that's targeted, great, but it's, oh, there's, Sam, there's no discussion of targeting. Just send it all to them. You know what one of my friends said it is, and, and quite frankly, it's not, I'm not into cliches and it doesn't, one shoe doesn't fit everybody's foot, but it's buying votes. We're the folks who are sending you money. And, and you know, I got to tell you, in this state, when Kenny Gwynn sent out that refund right. through DMV, you know how many people re remembered that? 
George Bush did a refund, Bush 43. Nobody remembers that. But when you stop it, it's like, how come it stopped? It's like, hey, the federal government can't afford to give you money by virtue of the fact that you exist. It's kind of a crazy situation. Let's take a break, let's come back and we'll have more with Congressman Mark Amaday after this timeout. Located in the heart of Carson City, the Bank Saloon, a historic watering hole with a modern feel. With a variety of classic cocktails, featuring Nevada spirits, space for private events, conferences, and an incredible atmosphere. The Bank Saloon offers a great location to work and play. Come visit us, located at the corner of 5th and Carson. We'll save you a drink. Serving Our Kids Foundation's mission is to serve homeless, at-risk, and food insecure children in grades K through 8 throughout Southern Nevada. During the pandemic, Serving Our Kids has seen a 42% increase in the number of children served, providing more than 4,500 meals to kids in over 100 schools weekly. Serving Our Kids is powered by community support and volunteers. To learn how you can help, visit servingourkids.org. Southwest Specialties has been making the homes and businesses of Nevada beautiful for more than 20 years. Their experienced designers and craftsmen create the walkways, backyards, water features, and a variety of outdoor cooking areas that add curb appeal and value to your investment. Call today or visit them at their website and see how they can make your outdoor spaces special. Southwest Specialties, creative, distinctive, beautiful. Hi, I'm Renee Summerauer, digital news anchor here at 7 at 7. Watch our streaming nonstop newscast immediately with your mobile phone. 7 at 7 is the new way for you to get every bit of local news you need in just seven minutes. Breaking news, local neighborhood news, weather and sports are just a click away. Reporters bring you all of what's happening in the valley from Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, YouTube and more get every bit of local news you need from the RJ and LVRJ.com. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Congressman Mark Amaday of CD2. So we've got a whole bunch of things. Let's see how many of these we can get through here. Fire away. Um, Smart Cities, Blockchains, LLC. Um, it's now gone to a, a study that's going to happen, a commission, uh, over the next few months. Um, what were your thoughts on a chunk of Story County being given up um, to a private company or any county in the state of Nevada? Because I think eventually it could have been that if you got 50,000 acres. Um, what were your thoughts on that? Well, I, I mean, first of all, I think the folks from Story County made a good point. And, and by the way, traditionally, when you look at what the objectives are there, it's like that's what counties do development agreements with developers for. You know, you want some special treatment within these borders. You know, that, that mechanism has been there. Um, it, it was used in Story County with the uh, creation of Tahoe Reno Industrial Center. Bob Sater represented uh, 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 Roger G uh, Norman and Lance Gilman. Um, and, and the county, actually the office that I worked in at the time, um, did some consulting for the county on looking at, the, at that in terms of what goes in and out of that, how it's handled and, and who's responsible for what costs and all that. So, uh, I, and, I, and I know that, that this, uh, the gentleman from blockchains who bought all this, but you look at this and you go, you know, that's a fairly complex undertaking in that location. So first of all, you, you want an exception from all of uh, Chapter 278 NRS, and you kind of want to do it your own way, like a homeowner's association, you know, on steroids or something. And it's like, well, I don't know, maybe that makes sense in some areas, but w when you look at that area and you say, well, have you approached the county and they gave you the finger, you know, or, or were they willing to talk with you about what you wanted to do? Um, so that's not entirely clear. But what we know to start is um, that part of the state, water is not a non-issue. As a matter of fact, it's a very big issue. And when you're adjacent to the Truckee River, you've got federal water masters, federal court decrees involving two states, You've got the Pyramid Lake uh, 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 tribe and the reservation, which has been very successful in protecting what they perceive as their rights in the Truckee. You've got a couple of endangered species. So you've got all this stuff where, whether you get your own exemption from Nevada development law, 
There's all this federal NEPA stuff that still applies. Oh, and by the way, when you're talking about water, it's like, well, where are you going to bring it from? Well, maybe they were going to bring it from up north, you know, uh, in northern Washoe or something like that. Well, go call the folks at Vidler Water Company who are the last ones to do that. And, 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 and that was for an existing municipal utility that they were bringing some water in. And, and so you have to do things like rights of ways and pipelines and NEPAs on all that stuff. And oh, by the way, um, I haven't seen a map, but, but there's just a whole heck of a lot of stuff where I don't know whose idea it was to say, we need to slow this down some, but, but I think that's a prudent move in terms of going, hey, vote it up or down or, or, or whatever. We're either going to be all in for this or, or not, because if it becomes law, then it becomes precedent, Sam. And so it's like, and I'm just saying, you know, the state seems to have done okay since 1864 with how it's developed in terms of things like this. And not that we don't need to evolve, but a um, whole heck of a lot of unanswered questions in terms of how does this actually, you know, come to fruition and then, by the way, if it turns out it doesn't work or you want to walk away, what do you do then? That, and that's the big question. I mean, really, um, once you go beyond water, once you go along uh, with uh, or go past uh, what appears to be some personal problems uh, with potential sexual assault um, or harassment, I should say, not assault, um, that cases are floating through that uh, the Reno Gazette Journal has been reporting on, and people can Google if they want to know more about that. Um, then, you know, it, it, it just seems to me that, um, you know, you have other issues as well. The projections that Jeremy Aguero, a very well-respected person uh, in terms of economic analysis, um, uh, says now that, well, the numbers that they were looking at in terms of jobs and money um, were actually spread over 65 years. Are we serious about looking at things that are projected over 65 years when if you go back 65 years and looked ahead, what would you see? Yeah. No well, iPhones, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, and, and, and I guess if it need, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with taking a look at it. But taking a look at it is different than here's the bill up or down, it's going to happen at the end of the session if it's up. And, and while they've, they've hired, um, you know, um, some pretty significant folks to work on it. Incredibly so, yes. But, but, but Sam, I'll just remind you, remember Tahoe County? I mean, there were pretty significant folks working on that, and they weren't trying to do a special carve out, they were trying to form a whole new county. And so all the stuff you look at, it ultimately ended up in, in some legislation passing that said, you're gonna treat things a little different between the lake in Douglas and the lake in Washoe. Um, and, and so it's like, you know, we haven't heard anything about that since, so hopefully that helped the situation. But this deal was like, hey, listen, if you want to plan community, um, whatever, then it's like, why, first of all, tell me why the traditional ways of getting approval to do that in any county in the state are, are not going to work for you. Give me just a, a, a brief, because we're, otherwise we're running out of time here. Um, what were the thoughts coming to you from Elko County, Eureka County, um, Humboldt County, um, when they saw the potential for 50,000 acres to be a determining factor in being at a carve out a chunk of a county? Because it seems like there were concerns pretty Well, the, pres the presidential value was something that scared people because quite frankly, you know, counties make plans too and, and, they, and they have planning commissions and county commissions that do all that stuff. And so when you're sitting here talking about how do we balance the books on this county or this city and you're like, well, hey, if this development area is capable of being basically in, in private ownership and then being taken off our books, that's a huge whack for those folks. And, and, and so, in terms of a precedential thing, we're going to, so now I've got to put my crystal ball up to say, by the way, if somebody has the resources to be able to go in and do a full court press on our biannual legislature, and, and the governor will sign the bill, um, then that's something we have to try to predict too. That, that's, that's, a, that's way, way behind the eight ball for those folks. Um, when you put together a commission to study something, is that pretty much the death of the bill? Well, you know what, I, I mean, I would hope that it's like, hey, if, if they need to evolve a little bit, then let's look at that. So maybe there's, it's kind of like the Lake County stuff. Maybe there's some, we can tweak things a little bit in the state statutes, but, um, you know, it's just, a, it's just a perilous road to go down in terms of, of at least in the history of this state, to where you're going to start telling counties that, that what they had to, to govern, they don't have anymore. 
All right, let's take a break. More with Congressman Mark Amaday after this timeout. Tamarack Casino is giving away two Mercedes-Benz during the $125,000 Benz or Cash Giveaways. Plus, players get five times points on video reels every Friday. Win two Mercedes-Benz now through May at Tamarack Casino. The Do It Right guys at Nevada Heating have one mission. Your furnace breaks down today, we fix it today. Why freeze for days while your furnace is down when Nevada Heating can get the job done today and you can get warm again? For nearly 50 years, locally owned Nevada Heating has been getting the job done right. Call today at 323-5585 and we'll fix it today. That's 323-5585 or online at nevadaheating.com. Each day, the Children's Advocacy Alliance partners with leaders, legislators, and families across Nevada to improve children's health, education, economic well-being, and safety. We recognize Nevada will be no better than the state of its children. Be a part of this change. Be a supporter of the Children's Advocacy Alliance. For more information, go to caanv.org. Tamarack Casino is giving away two Mercedes-Benz during the $125,000 Benz or Cash Giveaways. Plus, players get five times points on video reels every Friday. Win two Mercedes-Benz now through May at Tamarack Casino. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers coming to you from Carson City, which is perfect because that's where Congressman Mark Amaday actually has his home. Yep. Um, so uh, the discussions at the legislature about getting rid of natural gas within the next few years, um, not only did Southwest Gas obviously have a fit and say that they want to be part of the solution, not just the problem, um, but NV Energy, Senator Reid pushed them away from coal to natural gas, um, and they're not happy about this either. Your thoughts on it? Well, um, is the, it, are we heading in energy technology towards the cleanest possible energy, whatever that turns out to be, solar, wind, geothermal, combination of all, all that stuff. That's all well and good. Um, but to basically say evolution is a bad word and matriculating into something based on whatever, it's like, listen, m maybe gas becomes even cleaner than it already is. So to, to just sit there and say no, I mean, I get for a portfolio standard, you're like, hey, I want 20%, I want 30% to be renewable. Okay, that's a policy thing, which, but to just say, hey, by the way, you can't play anymore? I, I mean, even when you look at, at for goodness sakes, coal, um, Newmont invested a heck of a lot of money on the TS Ranch out there between, um, what is it, between Battle Mountain and, and Carlin. Um, th there was a coal-fired plant that Senator Reid helped him get the air permits for. Obviously, NV Energy has Valmy, and I don't know what the status of all that is, but burning coal for power today is not the same as it was 20 years ago. And so it's like, if you can do it and have it be carbon neutral or whatever, why wouldn't you do it? I just don't like it. Well, okay, I get that, but you gotta have something to take its place, and, and I don't think gas is the offender. So to just sit there and say, we're taking that off the, off the books now too is like, well, well, why can't we do that in some sort of a thoughtful way if that's where the innovation and technology leads us? Um, the one thing that the environmentalists don't want to talk about is nuclear power. Yeah. It's the cleanest power that we have. Taking Yucca Mountain off the table in terms of my question, um, is there any discussion in D.C. about increasing nuclear power um, as the cleanest form of energy, or do we have to change the name of it in terms of yeah. marketing um, so that we can have the benefits of it? There is no discussion with this administration or with the, the leadership that's in the majority in, in, in both the houses now. I mean, that's the short answer. But, but it's also one of those things where, I mean, even President Obama said, everything's on the table. Now, I don't think they executed on that, but it's like, if it can be done in a, in a safe and environmentally uh, responsible way, why wouldn't it be in the running? Let me ask you a political question, and um, you feel free to answer it whatever way you want to. Obviously, you have had discussions about running for governor, yep. um, but it also looks as though in the next Congress, it's likely that the Republicans take control of the House. That would potentially put you on appropriations, which would be a very powerful position for Nevada. Would you like to be in the majority and potentially in a seat like that? or? What are you looking at? Well, that's the, th that's the thought process, Sam, is, is you sit there and say, 
um, I mean, obviously, I think with, with my history um, and, and with and doing this now in one form or another for over 20 years, you, you bring a lot of experience to just what the issues are and in terms of solving problems and where those buttons are and what the needles on the gauges say on that. So, so I think there's a lot to offer in terms of that and, and that knowledge goes for both ends of the state. Then, then when you talk in a statewide sense about, hey, Washoe County is a pretty important place in a statewide sense as, as one of the few Republicans who's won Washoe County in a larger context six times in a row, not that that means anything, you're only as good as your next election, but still it's something where you say, hey, Donald Trump left the rurals with 75,000 vote advantage. He lost Washoe by 10 and then Clark by 100. So when you start to put those numbers together, I think we've got something special that should be in the discussion for the governor stuff. But against that, you say, you know what, I don't know what the 2022 election is going to be like. However, there is a chance that you could then be in the majority on appropriations, which would put you, I don't know if the retirements are there yet or not, but could put you for a subcommittee chairmanship, which is, you know, a, a, a good place to be in, in terms of, of making sure that we get, you know, the policies right and also taking care of Nevada. And that's where we have to leave it. Come back soon. It's always a pleasure. Good Thank to you. see you. And we'll be right back. Brian Culpa Photography was born in the rolling hills of Massachusetts, and now he can help you experience the stunning beauty of Nevada in a whole new way through the power of flight. Flying has always been a passion for Brian, and at Brian Culpa Photography, he can make your imagination soar. Brian has the creative mind and tools to tell your unique story. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Hi, my name's Marilyn Miner, and I'm sure you'd agree that Nevada's a very special place to live. I was born here, and my husband and I have raised our family here. I feel it's a privilege to live and work in the Truckee Meadows. I especially enjoy helping my clients reach their real estate goals. Sometimes the smallest details provide the greatest satisfaction. I'd be complimented to talk to you about your next move. Call Marilyn Miner at Dixon Realty, 742-1280, or log on to MarilynMiner.com. Safety, we all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions, and all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority, and it's ours too. Every day, in everything we do. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers on television, radio, audio and video, podcasts, and YouTube. We'll see you on the next broadcast coming to you from Carson City. See you then.